Good morning. Good morning. I will turn off the notification for the IG. Hello everyone. Welcome to whichever part of the world you are watching from. Today's topic is core. So again, choose any option which works for you. Uh, this is going to be an all level class. That means practitioner, whether you are intermediate, beginner or advanced, you can have benefits practicing this. Again, there will be some options stated. Choose the one works best for you. Work hard and uh, we won't be going for one full hour of core practice. It would be somewhere around uh, 30 to 40 minutes. So enjoy, let's sweat out and uh, give some boost to that core. Probably these days not going as much in the outing and sitting and just eating does need some core practices. But I do understand that lots of us are diligent and we have been practicing quite often or on a regular basis through the online classes. So one more day, let's rock it. So let's set the intention of today's practice. Sit in any comfortable position. Join the palms in front of the heart. Close your eyes. Send some healing energy to the earth, and to your friends and loved ones who needs it. allow any form of stress or difficulties to melt down through your sweats on the mat. And have an intention of just letting go anything you're holding. Through yoga practice we come into that state of unity where we work on the body but that is a stepping stage towards our spiritual journey as the mind remains centered and calm while we are working with the physicality. So let's also be aware of the breath as it passes through the nostrils now. Take a deep inhale in now. Exhale, relax. unite our individual consciousness with that of the cosmic energy through one chant on home. Together we inhale. get started lie down on your back so we'll be starting first with some deeper muscle groups um, it will be overall or round practice of your frontal core the back muscles the deep back muscles the obliques the serratus the lats all involved in together so lie down and lift your legs up at a 90 degrees angle to start resting the hands out to the sides of the hip if you need some uh, space for your hamstring, bend the knees slightly and that's perfectly fine. We'll be working with some reverse crunches over here. So we want to scoop the tailbone upwards, reaching the feet towards the ceiling. Not towards the torso, but up towards the ceiling. So as we breathe out, we press down in through the sacrum and lumbar. Lift the tailbone up and then bring it down. Very subtle movement is a small one. Exhale, lift up. Inhale down. Three. Down, 20 of that, four, down, 
five, down, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one. Hold this for 10 seconds. The entire lower back presses down. The tailbone is elevated. Reach those toes towards the ceiling for the last three. Reach higher, soften your palms. Two, reach higher, one. Relax the tailbone down. So get back a neutral spine. Bend the knees, take a deep breath in. Extend the leg back up again. Press the back down, and this time lower your legs down at a 30 degrees angle from the floor. And we hold this for a 30 second. Keep the palms soft. Mm. Belly drawn in, feet are active. But check that there is no space at all as you insert your palms underneath the lower back. Nothing can go inside. So you're pressing down every single part of your cells down on the mat. I'm fine, no worries. I'm okay, I'm just sweaty. Don't worry about me, happy. Yeah, I was talking to my cat. Okay, we are having last 10 seconds there. Keep pressing down, reaching those core for five, four, three, press the back, two, and one. Bend the knees into the chest. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale. All right. One last thing as we stay down, reach those legs back up once again at a 90 degree, bend the knees slightly again. Tight hamstring, always good to bend the knees. It actually helps us to focus more core control rather than fighting with the resistance of the hamstring. Your arms either out on the cactus or down by the side of your hips. The cactus makes it a little bit more challenging, so your choice. On your exhale, bring both your legs down towards your left side and stop at a 30 degree. Good, inhale, come up. Exhale, down to the right side. Inhale, come up. Exhale, left. Inhale, exhale, right. Lower it as much down as possible for you. Inhale, exhale, left. Inhale, exhale, right. So 30 degrees is really the starting point. Inhale, exhale, left. In, exhale, right. Lower it more. Inhale, exhale left. Inhale, exhale right. Inhale, exhale left and hold it. If you're having a real tough time, bend the knees for an option. Try not to choose that though. Five, four, all the side lines of the body. Three, two, and bring it up. Inhale, exhale, go down to your right side. Keep it low. Holding it for five, four, Three, side body. Two, lower it more. Legs are strong. And all the way up, inhale. Hug the legs. Take a deep breath. Rock yourself up. Set yourself in a downward facing dog. Walk the feet. Soften the back of the legs. And set up a steady dog. Reach out through the line of your armpits. And come forward into plank. Lower the body all the way down. And lie down on the belly. Let's do some back lifts here. So your arms are out to the sides. So your fingertips are almost touching to the line of the ears. On the next inhale, lift the legs, chest and arms up. Engage the whole back. Exhale down. Ten of that. Inhale. Exhale. In. Out. Four. Exhale. Five, exhale, six, exhale, seven, exhale, eight, exhale, nine, exhale, ten, hold this one, thirty seconds, straight strong legs, 
So if you prefer to draw your arms back, interlock the fingers and squeeze those scapula closer to each other, we can just do it with the hands staying in the same place, but yet to really engage those mid-back glutes, legs strong, reach the thighs up, reach the chest up, thighs up, chest up, inner thighs, squeeze the legs in together to meet them if you can, lift the thighs up for one more time, chest up, and relax it down, press up in a cobra, inhale, And push back and down dog. Exhale. Good. Come forward into plank. Set your elbows down, coming into a forearm plank. Let's hold this for a 30 seconds. Join the feet together. Shoulders directly above the elbows. Scoop the tailbone low. Engage the glutes. Keep it high up into the torso. 15, strong legs, scoop the tailbone, 5, keep it high, those mid back, upper back, and relax it down. Okay, nice and warm in here, time for a shift sasana. Uh, option is, of course, to go ahead into the wall, take a wall support, and check if you might want to as well go for a half head stand in case especially the neck isn't feeling ready yet. We did all the required practices which are necessary to have those muscle engagement while doing a headstand, but again, feel free just to stay back in a half wall, okay? So let's go. We'll be holding this for one minute. Any lifts. Taking a butterfly for your next option. Straighten legs. Reach your right leg down towards the floor, but do not touch it. Let it hover a couple of inches off. Bring it up. Squeeze the legs. To the other side. Left leg. Let it hover. Strong legs. Upper leg pulls in. Lift it up. Shoulders wide. Back to butterfly. And going to a straddle split. Last few seconds left. Bring it all the way back up. And set it down. Child's pose. Press back up and down the facing dog. Tuberance here. Come forward, plank. Come into a forearm plank, so set your elbows down one more time. Previously it was a static practice, it will be a dynamic this time. Now, keep the feet together. We'll be going for 20, lowering down the butts and pushing it back up. So lower down the pelvis itself. Inhale, push it all the way up. Down, up two. Down, three. Down, four. Down, five. Down, six. Down, seven. Down, eight. Down, nine. Down, 10. When you're coming up, check the height. When you really recruit the core, 10 more. Down, one. Two, three high, four, five, open up high, six, seven, eight, tailbone, nine, ten, hold it for five seconds, check the core, legs are strong, and relax your knees, 
stretch back and down the facing dog. Breathe into it. All right, 10 transitions coming in from a long plank down into a low plank. So walk your arms towards the top of the mat. Walk your feet back. Now, as you scoop in the tailbone, check that your arms from the wrist to the shoulder should look almost like a 45 degree. So check if you would like to walk in more or right, just a bit. Now, wrap the elbows in, wrap the triceps back, and set your elbows down together. Check the hip down, up, exhale, two, exhale, three, exhale, four, exhale, five, exhale, six, exhale, seven, exhale, eight, exhale, nine, exhale, ten, hold it, walk back, down the facing dog. Breathe. Set the knees down. Back to the dolphin. Dolphin plank rather, or a low plank. And we'll be making a very subtle move of engaging the core and drawing the arms back in towards the feet. So come back into your forearms plank. This time separate the feet, hip width distance. Now draw the elbows towards the feet, draw the feet towards the elbow, so squeeze in and relax out. Again, two, ten times, and relax. Exhale, three, relax. Four, relax. Five, relax. Six, relax. Seven, relax. Eight, relax. Nine, relax. 10 and hold it for 10 seconds. Tailbone down, legs strong. Shoulders wide, away from the ears. Neck long for four, three, pull in more, two, pull in more. And set your knees down. Child's pose. A few deep breaths. Sit back up. Option. Repeat your Shirsasana one more time, your headstand. Second option, we do a tripod headstand. You might want to try doing a tripod headstand against the wall or just a teddy bear with the knees walking on top of the upper arm. Again, choose the one which feels right at this moment. So coming in for a tripod, you want to set your arm shoulder with distance Set so the same point of your head as it was before. The frontal crown. Hug the elbows in. Check these vertical lines. I'm often asked which, how far my palms should be from my head. So when you're coming into this point, as you're tiptoeing, check that your lower arms are vertically aligned from the ground. And then we bring it back up. Just simply stay there, doing nothing much, or to challenge it, bring your right knee down to touch your right elbow. Hold. Go back up. Left. Through the left elbow. Hold. Go back up. Bend both the legs, bring it down into a crow. For three, two, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Relax there, taking four breaths. Okay, let's work now into the obliques. If you recall, we did one practice which was uh, the windshield, lying down, moving the leg side to side. We'll be doing that in a 
for um, side plank. Let's come down on our right side. You can keep the lower arm um, facing forward straight. I prefer it to keep it slightly diagonal, it gives me a better surface area. And also if you have got uh, muscular shoulders or tighter, stiffer shoulders as well, it tends to in a bit, actually makes it more easier to control. So bring it up, set your left foot on top of the right foot, bring your left arm on the hip. Now bring the hip all the way down, just raising it on the floor and push it back up. 10, push, 9, down, up 3, down, 4, down, 5, down, 6, high, down, 7, down, 8, down, 9, down, 10, and hold it, wide shoulders for 5, 4, legs strong, 3, 2, and 1, bring it down, switch side, so setting your left forearm in, lifting up, set the right foot on top of the left foot, right hand on the hip, exhale down, up, 2, up, 3, up, 4, up, 5, up, 6, up, 7, up, 8, up, 9, up, 10, hold it up there, feel the side lines working, of course the shoulders are cooking as well, for 3, 2, 1, bring it down. Okay, well done. If you have got uh, triceps not very strong yet, probably the next practice would be obviously more challenging. This is called a tiger push-up, so it's a combination of a dolphin going in for a chaturanga, pushing back up in a plank, going back down and pulling it behind. So I'll demonstrate once, have a quick look. So I go in a dolphin, from there I shift, I go in a chaturanga, push back in plank, go down chaturanga, push back up in a dolphin. That's one. Alternately, you can do a few push-ups easier. You can go for a full range push-up, going back up for five to even 10 because that time of moving five means you're going for 10 presses altogether. Alternately, you can also choose to go for knees push-ups. So choose. Ready? Five of that. Dolphin. Shift. Chaturanga. Push back plank. Go down chaturanga. Dolphin. One. Chaturanga. Plank. Chaturanga. Dolphin, two, chaturanga, dolphin, from the plank, chaturanga, dolphin, three, two more, chaturanga, plank, chaturanga, dolphin, one more to go, chaturanga, plank, chaturanga, dolphin, and down dog, all right, well done, four breaths here. From there, let's do something simple, yet quite effective on feeling the engagement of the mid-spine, the trapeze, the deeper rhomboid. So it's called a down dog extension. So as we are in a down dog, we usually sag down the shoulder. So the movement is dynamic. We lift the scapula up and bring it down, up and down. And that starts to recruit all the upper back muscles. So, down dog. If you have tight hamstring, please bend the knees. It's more rather effective because you don't get the resistance of your hamstrings. So let's go. So, sinking down. Let the head go down towards the ground and push it back up. One, 20. Down, push. Two, down, three, down, four. Full range of motion, down, five, down, six, 
down, seven, down, eight, down, nine, down, ten, down, one, down, two, elbows are straight, down, three, down, four, down, five, down, six, down, seven, go full, down, eight, go bigger, down, nine, down, ten, and hold it for five, reach up, reach up, lift those scapula up, three, two, and relax. Okay. Next practice. These can be challenging, and these are called the L-sits. They are the foundation doing any lifts or presses in our handstands. So, if you are not doing a full L-sit, you can do a tuck sit instead. Uh, if you have, I would recommend you having two blocks, and that becomes more easier to handle, especially for lots of us. We might be having shorter torso, and arms are not as long, so sometimes you can just test it out, sitting really straight, upright, and bring the palms down to the ground, and for around 30 to 40 percent of the students, which I have noticed until now, their palms won't be fully grounded, but they will be somewhere on the fingertips, and if you can see that I have relatively longer arms compared to my torsos, length. so when I touch the floor, I still have some bend on my elbows, so again, if you're someone who is like this and not yet able to reach the ground, a block would be handy. So we'll be doing L sets for three sets combined with some push ups. Tuck sit again. So when you do tuck sit, it's just to try and lift the knees up like this. So keeping the knees close to the chest. L sets are straight. Okay, so let's go for it. A beginner's option only hips up, the heel stays down to the floor. Push down. And up we go. For five, four, three, two. Cross your legs, take it back in Chaturanga. And then you go for five push ups. Low, up one, two, three, four, five. Set it down. Bring the legs up forward. It's fine to jump through if you want. Two more sets. Ready? Press down, lift the butts, push it back, lift the legs. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, cross, take it back. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, set it down. One more time to go. Shake those arms a bit. Give you a best shot, we're almost there. Almost there. One last thing after this, we are done. So give you a best shot. So hands down. Push, lift, pull back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cross, go back. Five, four. Touch the chest down. Three, two, and one. Okay. Set your blocks aside. Let's start going for Tolasana. Tolasana, I think, if you know your Sanskrit names, it's a lotus and lifting up. Alternately, I understand that. Not all of us would have a lotus, so you can do a lolasana, which actually is rather more harder than a tolasana because the legs are free, so to really engage those hip flexors to keep up. Same thing as L sits, arms, torsos, length, not mashing together. Go ahead and use two blocks next to you. So ready, lotus, right foot, left foot, or just right foot if you're not doing a full version. We're holding this for, guess how many seconds, 10, no, 20, 
Um, let's try 30 today, okay? Set your hands down, and up we go. Straight arms, long neck. Last ten. Five. Down. Release out. Switch. Left foot, right foot. Take a deep breath. Ready, set it down, and up. Shoulders wide, arms straight. Knees high, crunch in 10. 15. Last ten. Smile. Five. Arms. And go down. Straighten the legs. Okay. That was quite a lot of core, side body, back body. Shoulders as well. We'll be doing two stretches just so that we can counter those engaged muscles nicely. Get in a block. First is to try lengthening those abdominals. Basic bridge practice with the block. One of the best ones which can release. So lie down. Lift the butts up. Bring the block down underneath the sacrum. Press those arms, relax there for a while first. And then go ahead to straighten the knees. Flex the feet, push from the heels. Lift the butts, exit out the block, give a hug to your legs, rock and sit up. Sit in a cross-legged position. Sometimes we also feel that we get tired mainly on the shoulders, the trapeze, these areas, after all these plank variation and workout, more than the core. And one reason behind it is, core is a very deep muscle group. So in order to actually activate those core, you need to activate these superficial big muscles so that the activation of the core can also be connected directly. However, that is why core is called a lazy muscle because to build up the upper body strength, it doesn't take really long time. And if you are doing two to three times per week with your upper body, it's sufficient. But with the core, you can, this is such a muscle you can actually work on every single day. And still you will feel like, okay, I'm still gradually getting into that core practice. Right, so now reach your left arm across the chest and have your right arm crossing like a plus sign and draw the left arm into your right shoulder. Nice stretch on the posterior delts here. Also move a little bit up and down to check which part of the shoulder receives that good length of stretch all the way to your back muscle groups. Also a little bit of turn or a partial twist stretches those scapula and the muscles behind that. Good, release. Switch side, so your right arm extends, the left arm draws over the outer tricep, and then pull. Good 
gentle twist onto the right side, giving the shoulder to stretch. Really move into that right scapula to feel the good point. There's no specific rule or alignment over here where it should feel. It's the area which we are stiffer or tighter or has worked out harder is the one which we feel and for that that movement and experimentation is necessary. Okay, take your left arm over behind the head, reach the right scapula, and your right arm holds the left elbow. Draw the elbow behind the head. So your left palm is on your right scapula. Let the head to push the elbows backward gently. Let your right palm continue pulling the left elbow towards the right side. And take a gentle lateral bend now, bending out to the right side. So it stretches those lats. Let's come back, inhale, switch side. Taking the right hand up, get the elbow, draw it behind the head. Take a gentle lateral bend on the left side. not really trying to lift the sitting bone up, let the right sitting bone remain grounded and you're pushing the ribs to the right side, yes to the right side and bending down from the shoulder region more. And come back, oh, release those arms, push the ribs forwards, expand the chest, reach the head up. Take the hands back, interlock the fingers. One big inhale, open up nicely. Push the arms up and away from the ground. And relax. Close your eyes. And composure in your inner self. your breath, building back the physical awareness, feeling the lightness on the body, maybe heaviness on specific areas of the body. Let's take all in positives that you have transformed the physical body with a greater patience today, retaining the next level of discipline, not just the physical body's control, not just burning sweat, but that inner discipline, that inner integration to be your true self, to be the loving and caring person we all want to see from others. inhale through the mouth side out one more deep inhale side out gently open your eyes So I hope that you have enjoyed today's practice. Um, this is a great opportunity to carry on with some self practice, as I always say. Uh, Sometimes we do not go into the group classes, rather a lots of practice which we haven't been doing lately. We should continue working on them on our own personal basis. And this is the greatest time because the body is ready. Shavasana, in case you already had good enough practice for today. Um, stay tuned for more videos coming up. Pure's official Facebook 
uh, my IG account as well. I'll be releasing out the next week's schedule within this couple of days. And we'll be having some yoga talks and also some pranayama and meditation sessions. So thanks a lot, a lot for joining me. I hope you learned something today. I hope you are carrying something for your self-practice later or in future. I wish all of you a lovely day. Thank you. Namaste.